Meet Simon. Simon lives in Tanzania, East Africa. Tanzania is a beautiful country known around the world for its abundant wildlife and spectacular landscapes. Simon can see Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest peak in Africa, from his classroom. Tanzania has a variety of agricultural regions where tea, coffee, cotton, and plenty of corn are grown. In fact, one of its largest exports today is coffee. That's because Tanzania is in the hearth region of coffee's original domestication. Crops that today have diffused around the world were once only in an original hearth region. Here you can see coffee in East Africa, grapes in the Mediterranean, potatoes in South America, and rice in Eastern Asia, to name a few. In this unit, we will look at the origins of many crops and study how they diffused globally. We will also discover where and why humans began farming in the first place and how changes in technology over time continue to change agriculture even today. We'll look at how people use rural land. This is a home in Tanzania, similar to the home Simon grew up in. In this home, there is no running water, no electricity, and no kitchen or bathroom. People work together and share those spaces. There is one kitchen where the community can use the stove and wash bins. There may also be a community water well. Simon spent most of his early years helping his mom in their family garden. They would grow just enough food for their family to eat, perhaps with a little extra. This is called subsistence agriculture, and it is very common in the developing world. For a few hours each day, Simon would haul water from the closest well. Simon's mom needed all the help she could get, so Simon did not start school until he was 10 years old. It is common for children to stay home to help around the house, especially girls. In developing countries like Tanzania, what you see here is a very common scene. Women perform most of the farming tasks in addition to fetching water and caring for the home. Agriculture is intensive, which means large amounts of human labor in comparison to agriculture in developed countries, which takes place mostly with machines and very little human labor. Even at Simon's school, he has a plot of land that he takes care of in the school garden. The students at the school eat the vegetables they grow along with their daily staple of corn. Everywhere you look, you see corn growing in the rich, fertile soil of northern Tanzania. This is Simon surveying his land, which he will inherit from his mother when he turns 18. Different cultures have different manners of dividing land tracts and different inheritance norms, which we will also look at in this unit. Here, Simon shows that they have planted his land with a hybrid seed. We'll discuss the pros and cons of genetically modified organisms in this unit. After the corn grows, they pick it by hand and then take it to a community grinder. If they have excess, they can sell it at market to earn a little extra money to pay for luxuries like electricity or new school clothes and books. A staple of the Tanzanian diet is the ground corn. It is kept in bags and storage rooms until the next harvest or until it runs out. The ground corn is mixed with water to make ugali, the national dish of Tanzania, and the most common lunch for Simon at his school. For breakfast, ground wheat is mixed with water to make chapati, which the kids here are making, a flatbread that is also a staple food. Today, Simon is at secondary school. He boards there because the school is too far for him to walk from home in order to attend. 70% of his country is employed in agriculture. With an education, he will have other options. In this country, there is much interest in sustainable development, and the citizens respect the land and its other inhabitants, like these African elephants. I hope you enjoy this agriculture and rural land use unit as much as I do. See you in class.